I'm on a hunt on this crappy day. I went downtown, they had the strut compressor, but they didn't have the spanner wrench. We'll have to solve that issue in a second. But here's the tool right here. You just put this on your springs and then you compress them. Now, we're not gonna be a caveman today. We're gonna go ahead and put an impact on this and just impact them. You can use a wrench, a socket wrench, but no, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna use the air compressor. We're gonna use the impact wrench. Now, as you guys saw yesterday, I did change the, the warehouse around a little bit. The air compressor actually used to be on that side of the welder. And we did a little bit of air leak testing and we found out that there's no Teflon tape at the end of this hose. So before I go ahead and fill the air compressor back up, we'll get this so it doesn't leak anymore. And that way it won't leak anymore. It still has 50 pounds of pressure in it from yesterday. So the leak's not too bad. There, we got that fixed, now let's fire it up and get this impact ready. I have never used one of these tools in my life. I hope it doesn't kill me. So this is the passenger side shock. This is the front shock. The, the other side is, you can barely see it. Now remember folks, if you ever, ever feel like you're about to get hurt doing anything, make sure you have somebody record it. I don't condone getting hurt though. Why does this feel so sketchy? All right, I'm getting a little play in this top portion of the shock, which is good. I can, I can move that around, which tells me that there's some relief in this. And I can turn that. So, let's compress the shock. Now, I don't think I'll actually need a spinner wrench right now. I think what I can do is just get a punch and a hammer and, and take this locking nut off and I get the shock off because as you guys know, I want to powder coat this, I want to change the color. Shock number one off. I don't know if I should bother getting this powder coated or not because it's, you're never gonna see this. Now for the fun part, we'll back it back off and then we'll do three more. Shock number one. So far, riding this thing hasn't been the sketchiest thing. Even with the issues and the different tires and the new experience, they hasn't been the sketchiest thing. The sketchiest thing has been changing these things out. Well, at least I thought it was, but after I got using that tool, I really liked that tool. That went from being the tool that I was really, really questioning to just very, very exciting. So here are all four springs. These two are the rear, these two are the front. As I told you guys, I want to paint them blue. So I got to get them sandblasted first, so I got to call somebody about that. But before I do that, I have to grind up my rock rails or tree bars, whatever you want to call them. Seth did this one, but I got to do the second one down there. And I also got to do this weld here. And then also get the burrs from when I cut them with an the angle grinder off of here, otherwise it's going to turn out like crap. But I am going to weld these right to the frame, which some of you may uh, like and some of you may not like. I don't want to have to bolt something on. I want something permanent that works perfectly, that's engineered for that machine, and that's exactly what this is. So what I'll end up doing after I grind this down and not a complete death trap like this is, after I get it back from sandblasting, I'll tape off some of these edges so I can still weld it. And then once I put it on the machine and weld it, I'll paint that weld black just like the frame. 
So usually how I operate, if I know somebody in, in a certain business, I'll go to them first. Um, sandblasting is completely new to me. I've never had anything sandblasted before, so I'm gonna call a couple people. Hello, do you guys do sandblasting? Yeah. Hello, I got, I got four uh, springs that are about 20 inches long. I was wondering if you could give me some sort of estimate on what that would cost. Are they like leaf springs or are they coil springs? They're coil springs. Uh, I mean, depending on what kind of coating they had on the thing. Okay. Um, I've seen them things come through like they're out of like a pickup or something. Uh, they're actually off of a UTV. How many you got four of them or two? Four. You might have 50, 60 in the set. Okay. Um, if they're just painted, you probably would maybe have around 40 in the set. I just got my tree bars slash rock rails completed. I'm going to start calling them rock rails from now on because that sounds so much cooler. But anyways, what I'm going to do here is actually run a weld on my powder coating for this joint, but then for this joint, I ground it all down. So it's gonna look like it's one piece here. There you're gonna see a weld, and then same on this side, obviously, because we're gonna make a match. That's all ground down, but yet you see the weld here. All right, I'm gonna throw these things in the Duramax and go to the sandblaster. If you got pen and paper on it, you can go ahead and put another check next to the sketchy tab. Uh, I just went to the powder coating. Freaking A, sandblasting guy. I keep getting those two screwed up. I went to the sandblasting guy and uh, it was super sketchy. First of all, it's the GPS said I was there. I, I didn't think I was there, but I guess I was. I found this one random guy. He's like, yeah, he's over in that building. So went to that building. Super friendly guy. He took the pieces, just uh, not like, not your average sandblasting place. Jeepers. Okay, I made it home. I wanna talk about a few things. I wanna answer a couple questions because you guys have questions. I have answers to most of your questions. But before I get into that, I know a lot of you guys want orange hats, orange crush hats. This is all I'm down to, this is it. So if you want one, get it while they're hot. We're also running out of stock of the white and black one, my personal favorite at the moment. For these last two batch of hats, since I don't know when I'm gonna get them back in stock, I wanna go ahead and put my cologne in here. I just think it would be cool to incorporate both the look and the smell of 3D machines. If you think this is sketchy, you can, you can think that way. I personally think it's a froggy, froggy fresh idea. <laughs> okay, that's enough. I mean, mm, that is some good stuff. Now to get to some of your guys' questions. <laughs> <laughs> on the last 3D Machines production, I shouted out Austin S for buying machine merch at machinemerch.com. And somebody says, Austin S, what is your amazing last name? Austin, please answer this comment. Sometimes I don't want to disclose that information because I don't know how some people think. Chase127 commented, do an American flag wrap. Now, I personally don't have a lot of Photoshop skills, so I don't know how the wrap's gonna turn out, but I do want it to look extremely froggy fresh. Fiends with Dreams commented, hey man, I'm about to buy a 3D machine sweatshirt and I'm located in Buffalo, New York. I was wondering if I could come pick it up from you. If not, I understand. Due to liability purposes, I cannot condone that, so sorry, but I do appreciate the purchase. Fast Dude 2002 says, shift, damn it. <laughs> That's where the power is, man, next to the red line. Lawrence Coots, I believe, asks, why the hell didn't you let the guys that helped you get it running drive it? Who likes riding Well, I guess nobody asked me to drive it, so I just didn't offer to let somebody drive it. If somebody wants something, they usually ask. At least that's how I was brought up. Bennett Ross and commented, get new tires front and rear and wheel spacers so you don't roll. Thanks for the comment, Bennett. But however, spacers, they're kind of against regulation because you can only be 84 inches wide, I do believe. Or is it 64? It's a number, and I know that the YXZ is down to that constraint. Spacers would, would put it beyond that. Also, new tires are coming in. Now, I saw another comment earlier, but this one's from Eric Johnson. He says, do the other racers have engine mods? Now, there are different classes. There's like a turbo class, and there's like a, a stock class, and I'm running in the stock class. I don't want to go ahead and go to a turbocharger or a supercharger right yet because I want to learn crush. I want to learn how to drive it stock so that I can race other stock people that are kind of new to the racing scene so that I can actually place well. If I just throw a turbo into crush, that doesn't mean that I'm going to, to even compete with those guys because if they, if they understand how to drive a turbo vehicle and they know how to control that power, Power, that means they have more experience they're gonna place way better than I will that's why I don't want to turbocharge my stuff just like uh, if you ask a lot of dirt bikers I mean there are very very few people that can actually get the full power out of a 250 and there's people that are riding 450s and and uh, 
and 300s that will never get the full power out of them. So at the current time, I don't wanna put a turbo on it. I can do other engine mods, I do believe, just not a turbo. And the last comment comes from James Merrill's Brad. That thing's lit. You bet it is. I hope you guys enjoyed this 3D Machines production. If you have any comments, leave it in the comment section below. If you have anything funny to say, put it in the comment section below. I'd like to see your creativity down there. So if you would, please do that. Hit that like button while you're down there. Until next time, 3D Machines out.